Right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. If you are new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name is Tristan Mortlock and this is Captain's Vlog. Now today I want to show you the tunnel that we have, the secret tunnel that we have underneath the boat, just along the keel here. So I'm going to open the door, I'm going to show you what's inside. It leads all the way from the crew mess, which is the most forward part of the vessel, all the way to the engine room, which is pretty much, except from the garage, is the most aft of the vessel. So I'm going to open up this door and show you guys the secret tunnel. See, here we have it. Right, so, as you can see, we've got all the separate compartments going through the tunnel. Um, so the reason, the purpose for this tunnel, you can see it's all been cleaned and, and painted here. So, what's the purpose of this tunnel? So basically, we've got here on my left, we've got the fresh water tank. Then we've got what's called a coffer dam, which is a void space. And then we have the fuel tank. And then we have the exact same identical on the other side here, on my right, which will be the port side of the vessel. Um, so basically, it's will be fresh water, coffer dam, and then uh, diesel tanks. Now the coffer dam, what that's used for, it's a void space. Um, so basically, because we've got two types of different fluids, we've got water and diesel, in case there's any leaks or any um, <clears throat> damage done to the tanks, they're not going to be mixing fluids. That's why you have a thing called a coffer dam. So normally between any tanks, if they have, if they have separate fluid, you always have a coffer dam in between. It's just basically an empty void space. Uh, furthermore, along here, these are all the sunny splits all the way along the tunnel. So what a sunny split does is um, from the sinks, the showers, uh, the dishwasher, washing machine, the grey water, all goes into these sandy splits. And inside these little sandy splits, there's a little pump, and they pump the, the dirty grey water to the black and grey tank before that gets discharged uh, to the blue canister that we have on the, um, on the shipyard ground there. So I'll show you a bit more where this goes to. All the way along. All our piping, we've got wiring, hot water, cold water, um, air conditioning, circulation. Uh, we have a number of fire detectors down here as well. Here you can see there's some piping here that's blowing cool air um, through the uh, electrical board that we have in the guest area, so the sub electrical panel. And it's a very clever system. It has a, a uh, inbuilt heat detector, so if there's any sign of uh, fire or overheating, the whole thing will automatically shut down so it's not breathing the fire. Inside the uh, electrical board as well, we've installed um, what's called the automatic extinguisher bombs. So once, if it reaches a certain temperature, so there's a fire, it will activate and extinguish the fire automatically. On top of that, we also have the sprinkler system and we have the portable fire extinguishers as well, and we have the, um, the fire hydrants as well. So we have four types of fire extinguishing systems for that electrical board, just, just in case. And so, yeah, so we're just improving the boat every day and uh, making it as safe as possible, changing, improving. So really happy with the result so far. Along this piping here, we've got all the, um, insulation sorry they were all the insulation because this would be the very hot or very cold pipe ideally very cold and then obviously in the summer there's a lot more humidity when the air is in contact with the cold pipe it's going to create condensation and therefore it starts leaking into the bilges 
So we insulate this to avoid the uh, build up of condensation and also to prevent, prevent loss of coolness or heat. So it keeps it all well insulated. We've got a smoke detector here that is linked to uh, all the detectors on board and to the bridge. So if we have any types of fire in here, we will know immediately. Uh, these get inspected by the surveyor annually and we have to do uh, monthly checks for our um, <coughs> ISM, our mini ISM. So we always know these things are working. So what we do, the way we check that is I actually use a hairdryer because it's got heat and smoke detection. So I get a hairdryer. I blow hot air, it will set the initial alarm, the pre-alarm off on the bridge. I'll have the radio, and then I'll have the chief officer, Barbara, there telling me, yep, yeah, she can receive the, she's received the pre-alarm, and then the main alarm will then come on. We will then cool it down. It will then, um, I will then get what's called uh, canned uh, smoke, so basically artificial smoke, which is not toxic. And I'll spray the smoke into the smoke detector and then the pre-alarm will come on again on the bridge before the main fire alarm comes on. So that we do that as monthly checks on all the alarms on board to make sure everything's always working and to make sure all lives on board is as safe as they possibly can be. So as you can see, we do have a number of standing splits down here in the tunnel. All for all the great water system, as previously explained. All the piping, electrical wiring. And then we're gonna come here to one of the, uh, this is one of the 24 volt bilge pumps. So this is basically the backup bilge pump. You can see here, this is also a water pickup for bilge water. This goes to the main um, fire and bilge pump, which then gets transported to the, um, to the bilge water tank. That now leads us here into the engine room. Now the hatch is closed at the moment, so I won't be opening that now because I think the guys are working above. Another purpose for this long tunnel here is it's also used as a secondary means of emergency escape. So let's say for example, if we're in the crew mess and let's say there's a fire in the galley, we have the primary source of emergency escape, which I've shown in a previous video, which in the laundry room, we pull the ladder down and we escape to the forward hatch. But let's say for whatever reason we're unable to escape, we can come down to this tunnel, come through here into the engine room, and then escape out the um, the ECR, the engine control room uh, door onto the aft deck, and vice versa. Let's say that we have a technician or the engineers working here in the engine room. He has a fire in the ECR to the engine control room. He's unable to escape. He can come down here, make his way forward to the crew mess, and then escape out the uh, the hatch or through the crew entrance door on the port side of the vessel. So it's also using this as a, as a safety precaution on board as well. And it gives us the ability to access pretty much all the tanks, the tank tops, and to inspect, and basically to make sure all the buildings are dry and clean. Yes, Barbara, I've got you. Um, so that's Barbara on the radio, just checking to make sure the radio is working. Furthermore, what we have here is the valve, is the electric electrical valve for the bilge system. So throughout, so throughout the boat, we have uh, the main bilge pump. We can also use the fire pump as a bilge pump. And then on the forward side of the vessel, we have the emergency bilge pump, which is pretty much exactly the same, not pretty much, it is exactly the same specs as the main bilge pump. Uh, but that's for backup in case that one fails or there's a fire in there. And then throughout the boat, we have these valves so we can choose where we want the suction point from. So for example, this one will be suctioning from what I just showed you from, from here. If for the pipe round, so the moment you can see, we keep it closed. So they're always closed until we need them. Uh, the bilge pumps again get run monthly. The fire pumps get run monthly, minimum monthly for all the um, fire drills and uh, emergency drills that we do on board. Also have a manual um, alarm there. So that's basically the uh, a manual core point. So you basically push that and then the, the fire alarm will be activated throughout, throughout the boat. We have an additional fire extinguisher uh, that's gonna be dry powder there. Uh, so the majority of the extinguishers 
on board our dry powder. Uh, the benefit with powder is they do extinguish a number of categories of fires. The only problem is it's very dirty and make a lot of mess and they don't cool, they only smother. Um, so they smother the fire, they don't cool the, the surface area. So if you're using this, even though the fire's been extinguished, don't touch the area after, leave it for a long period of time, don't clean up for a long period of time until it's completely cooled down and then you can start the clean up process. The other thing, so basically this bilge pump here, which is a 24 volt system, is a backup to the backup. So if the main bilge pump fails, and then the emergency, and then, sorry, if the main bilge pump fails, we then have the fire pump, which can use as a bilge pump as well. Then we have the emergency bilge pump. So that's three pumps we can use. If those three fail, then we can use the 24 volt system as well. And then if that fails, what we can do is when we're using the, the two main engines, we can switch over the raw water intake, which is used to cool the engines. We can switch it over to uh, piping to a valve, which can, su can suck the water from the build, which is absolutely fantastic. So if all else fails, we can have the engines at high RPM and they'll be sucking the water and cooling the engine and sucking the water out of the bilge at the same time. Uh, furthermore, we also have uh, plug-in bilge pumps as well. Um, so we're trying to take as many precautions as we possibly can on board uh, to make sure, again, that it's always is running very safe. So this is all nicely clean and painted in here. So let's make our way aft again. I just want to show you where we come out of this bilge pump. Not sure what this is doing here. Uh, somebody left the rag in there to that with us. See, all nice and dry and clean. Oh, this will be the receiver for our echo echo sounder. So the other thing you can see is that what we have here is the fresh water tanks. Okay, so basically this pipe here is linking the two fresh water tanks together. So basically we want it to use them equally. If we want to, we can shut them down independently. So you can use only one side of the fresh water tank, but uh, due to the stability and equilibrium of the boat, we always want to use uh, as much as possible the water tanks equally. So they go down equally, keeping the um, stability correct and keeping the, um, and minimizing the list as well. Continue aft. Got another bilge pickup point here, as you can see, and another 24 volt point there. Another manual call point, extinguisher, and then up we come up the ladder into the crew mess here. Mm -hmm. 